Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin Anderson and I am a registered behavior technician here at Fox Behavior Group. I am also a graduate student at Ball State University working towards becoming a BCBA. I figured I would go ahead and introduce myself before we hop into this presentation on the VMAP Barriers Assessment. Let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. Let's see, let's make it bigger. Awesome. All right, so this is our presentation on the VBMAP Barriers Assessment. You may be asking yourself, what is the VBMAP Barriers Assessment? Because you've probably heard of the VBMAP Assessment, but not the Barriers Assessment. The VBMAP Barriers Assessment provides an assessment of 24 common learning and language acquisition barriers that are faced by kiddos with autism or other developmental disabilities. Here on the bottom left-hand corner, you can see hashtag the goal. I kind of wanted to add a little cute little hashtags in there to help you remember everything that we're learning. So the goal is to potentially eliminate a barrier that is impeding upon a client's success. The next slide, we're gonna be looking at some of those barriers, the 24 barriers that are looked at within the barriers assessment. So some examples of them would be defective imitations, defective scanning, defective mans, prompt dependency, which is one that we see oftentimes with kiddos with autism. We also have the failure to generalize. Next, are some of those barriers continued? So reinforcer dependency, defective articulation, sensory defensiveness, self-stimulation. If you wanna pause the video and take a screenshot or just read through all of those barriers, that way you can get familiar with them, that would probably be a really good idea. If not, you can always rewatch this video. All right, let's go to the next slide. So why is Fox Behavior Group utilizing the VBMAP, VBMAP barriers assessment? Because we haven't been implementing it for a while or at all. So the VBMAP barriers assessment is gonna help us identify any barrier that a client is experiencing. So we're gonna be looking at those barriers and saying, wow, this kiddo is having difficulty with X, Y, and Z because they have strong barriers in sensory defensiveness. That could be something that we're looking at. So all of the barriers assessment results will be included in every single treatment plan. So as you can see on number three, it's gonna be used for every client. So thinking about treatment plans, every single client is gonna have a section in their treatment plan that's gonna talk about those barriers, how we plan to overcome them, and just what have been what has been observed within those barriers and the scores that they receive. Next, we're gonna look at what steps need to be done before completing the barriers assessment, because we're not just gonna hop in and start doing the barriers assessment out of nowhere. We need to have some sort of previous prior assessment that needs to be completed before we start doing the barriers assessment. So those previous assessments could be the regular ABLES, it could be APLES, it could be the Vineland assessment, any single assessment that your kiddo has already been, that you've been doing for your client is going to be done before the barriers assessment. There's a little blurb in here about you need to have a better understanding of what your client can do, what they cannot do, and why. Those are our three things that we're going to be looking at. Whenever you start to do your barriers assessment, you need to gather your materials. So you need your VBMAP guidebook, which is going to include all of your instructions on how to complete the assessment. And then you're also going to need your VBMAP protocol book, which is going to be um, where you're going to get your scoring page. How to hashtag score your client. So we're going to be looking at a Likert type scale. Right here we have starting at zero to four. So zero, if you scored your client as zero, that will mean there's no barrier, no problem. One would be an occasional problem, two would be a moderate problem, three would be a persistent problem, and four would be a severe problem, which means it's truly interfering with a lot of your kiddos' success. Down here in the little squares on the bottom, you can see a little summary of the scores. So if your kiddo scores a zero to one, that means there's not a significant barrier and it does not need to be within the formal intervention plan. If your kiddo scores uh, two to four, then there, there is a significant barrier and there should be some sort of addressing of the barrier within the intervention program for that client. Next, I talked about the Likert type scale. So you may be asking yourself, what is a Likert type scale? Because whenever I first heard the term, I was like, I have no idea what that is. And then when I saw an example of it visually, I'm like, oh my gosh, we do those all the time, especially whenever we send out little, um, not Quizlets, what's the word I'm looking for? little surveys. Lydia likes to send out surveys a lot and those are typically Likert type scale assessments. So a Likert type scale of assessment is it involves a series of statements that respondents, which would be those who are assessing the kiddo, may choose from in order to rate the responses to evaluate questions. So down here on the bottom, I wanted to make a little simple one. So how many years have you worked at Fox Behavior Group? 
if you are thinking, oh my gosh, who is Fox Behavior Group? I've never heard of them before. That will be a zero. Who is Fox Behavior Group? You will give yourself a zero. But if you're like, dude, I've worked at Fox Behavior Group for six years, you would score yourself a four because you have worked at Fox Behavior Group for more than four years. Next, we're gonna also continue with how to hashtag complete the assessment, the Excel document. A lot of you are gonna be familiar with this type of filling in an Excel document because it is like the typical ABLES. So each barrier assessment has its own assessment square on the recording form. You will shade in the squares vertically to reflect your assessment responses. So if you look over on the X axis of the graph, that is going to represent your session. So every six months. So first assessment will be one, six months later it will be two, continuing on. On the Y axis, that is gonna be your score for the barrier. And you're gonna color that in. On the next slide, we're gonna see a more visual representation of how it's gonna be done. Uh, most importantly, if you have a barrier that falls in between two scores, you're like, ah, I feel like I'm sitting at a two, but it also could be a three. You wanna go ahead and pick three because you wanna be safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry. Here we go. Here's the visual representation of the color. So continuing on with how to hashtag complete the assessment with the master scoring form. The first thing you're gonna do on the upper left-hand corner is you're gonna fill in the client's name, their date of birth and their age at testing. You wanna make sure you get that done first because we wanna know who we're scoring. Next, we're going to look at the upper right hand corner. So for each test, you're going to fill in the date, a color of choice and the initials of the tester. So the person who filled out this scoring form chose orange, green, red and blue. That would represent each different assessment that's completed every six months. And then you're going to put the date and the initial of who um, completed the assessment. The VBMAP barriers assessment should be completed around every six months to a year. So whenever you're typically doing your assessments with those other forms of assessing, other forms of assessing like the AFLES or the original VBMAP, that's when you're gonna also complete the VBMAP barriers assessment. All right, next we have an example of a client barriers assessment. So I went ahead and created a fake kiddo on here. That way we could get some sort of visual example of how you're gonna score on the master scoring form. So we have client HBRL. So we're gonna look at number 21, which is obsessive compulsive behavior. HBRL shows strong obsessive compulsive behavior that disrupts learning for a significant amount of time. I went ahead and scored him a four on that. You can see over in the circle with the arrow, I put a four in the first assessment. The next one, number 22 is hyperactive behavior. So HBRL moves frequently and has difficulty attending to tasks causing the learner to be disrupted. I gave HBRL a score of a two for that one. Uh, number 23, we have failure to make eye contact and attend to people. HBRL makes no eye contact while manding and typically looks away when talking to others. His attention is mainly focused on items rather than people. So that description matches up with number three on the barriers assessment. So I went ahead and put a three in the first one. Last but not least, we have 24 sensory defensiveness. HBRL has specific sounds and songs that causes him to cover his ears, close his eyes, and engage in hitting behaviors. He scored a three on that one. Next, we're gonna look at how can the ABLE scores help us identify VBMAP bears assessment scores? Same with how can AFL scores, how can, how can those other scores help us identify the barriers assessment scores. So completing the VBMAP barriers assessment is much easier to accomplish whenever other assessments have been completed first. So for example, you can look at the original ABLE scores or the original AFL scores, and you can say, we're seeing really, really, really strong and low, low responses in this section. And that's probably gonna relate to, when you look at the barriers assessment, you're gonna see really high scores. So it's really fun to look at the different comparison of, of why, why are we struggling with LRs? Oh, it's because we're seeing a really, really high, high barrier number in X, Y, and Z barrier scores. So it's really important to be able to identify those and then make that connection for your kiddo. So at the bottom, we have hashtag know your client. Understanding your client and their behavior will help you significantly. Being familiar with their behaviors and being familiar with functions, it's going to help you significantly. It's hard to believe we're at the end, but we have a list of resources. So if you wanna do some more independent research on your own on the VBMAP barriers assessment, feel free to. I went ahead and added some resources that I found really helpful. We have um, marksundberg.com. That is where you can find some detailed paragraphs on the VBMAP barriers assessment along with just the original VBMAP assessment. 
And then you can also visit the official VBMAP website. I found that to be helpful as well. If you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can send me a message on Sling or Slack, or you can also email me at caitlin.fbg at gmail.com. I hope you all enjoyed this presentation. And like I said, if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out. I hope you have a great day.